Hey guys, Wayne Stevenson here. Today I'm going to walk you guys through the top 10 FPV simulators. These aren't going to be full in-depth reviews of each simulator because I'm only going to take about an hour of your time. But I am going to go through the option settings, the graphic settings, the flight settings, the controller settings, and after that, take you on a ride as we go through a bunch of flight footage. Without further ado, in no particular order, here is my top 10 list of relevant FPV flight simulators. For the first addition to our list, you guys are probably going to question me why I'm putting on a list of relevant flight simulators, seeing as they ceased production of it a few years ago, but I think it's very much relevant to today. Graphics were ahead of its time, flight characteristics are excellent, the physics are completely customizable. Your quads are customizable. Your RAID settings can all be managed through there. Uh, it's an excellent simulator. Anyhow, check out the flight footage and see for yourself. Okay, as you can see here, um, I've got a number of levels you can select from and your standards. As you can see here, there's a number of levels you can select from. You got the option of flying freestyle or timed races and your standard beta flight settings you can choose from a couple of their options in there but they're all pretty much the same uh, changing your quad characteristics your RC rates PID controlling Standard customization, you've got the options to set up a couple of your buttons for resetting your race, resetting your quad when you crash. And a bunch of options for your uh, graphic settings, your volume settings. It's all pretty much standard across most of the flight sims. And when you're in game, you can change a few of your settings and your physics. You can change your quad uh, arm sizes, angles, that sort of thing. Adjust your gravity, your drag. Basically, you're uh, changing the physics of everything so that you can fine tune it to where it feels real for you. And this is a really fun level right here. There's tons of gaps to go through. There's gaps galore. I could actually fly this level forever. If there's one level just to fly, uh, this would be one of them that I would choose. If I were to make a choice. Just really fun. Uh, cinematic. Graphics are great in this one. Once you get your quad set the way you want it, and you get the level, uh, you know, your gravity level, drag levels, until it starts feeling real for you, and it becomes a lot of fun to fly. I hope you don't get bored watching this level because I really love it. I can fly this scene all day, like I said. You got gaps. You got drops to go down. You got wall rides. You never get bored with this level, and there's more to see. Like, I don't fly around. I just stay within these uh, these ruins here, and there's lots more to see. You can go in the forest a little bit.
There's a lot of fun stuff you can find to do in here. It's like an awesome playground for quads. I think if a place like this existed in real life, we'd be in heaven with our quads. Now, there's a lot going on here, so you can spend days figuring out some cool lines to fly. And you got the cityscape here. This is really cool. It's uh, one of the only sceneries in all the flight sims that I've flown that uh, you can really have fun with flying backwards on. Just under that bridge deck there. And your standard cityscape, which I personally find pretty boring. But it is fun to, to go through the buildings, whip around. I really love this bridge here though, the overpass. A lot of fun, you can slalom around it. Get some buildings to ride down. Not a lot of gaps in this uh, scenery though, but like I said, underneath here, it's a playground in itself. They do have parkades and some buildings you can fly inside. Just fly around, you'll find them. And some winter time flying. These levels are, uh, or at least this level is a little smaller than the other ones. Not a lot to do in here, but uh, as far as racing goes, I'm sure it's a fun race. forest. This one's a little tough to navigate. You're always hitting trees and branches. I'm not really sure why they uh, include forest runs in a lot of these simulators. Um, other than racing, uh, freestyle, it doesn't really serve too much. I should say it doesn't offer too much. Again, another little uh, scenery here to fly. I like flying in uh, trees and snow. I don't. I live in central Alberta where we get lots of that. And this little uh, park area. A few tight gaps to go through. Not a whole lot going on here for freestyle, but uh, if you're a racer, I could definitely see that this would be a fun uh, track to roll. And your obligatory parkade. I'm not a big fan of flying in parkades myself. The next flight simulator we're going to go through is FPV Freerider. It's a pretty basic flight simulator as far as simulators go, but you can still control your physics, your flying characteristics. The graphics aren't fancy or punchy, but I think you're going to like that as far as a basic simulator goes. When I first started out flying, I was just flying line of sight on 450s like the guys behind me here. And then when I switched over to FPV, FPV Freerider is the one that started me out. There are better ones out there, but have a look and see what you think for yourself. So here in the main screen, you can adjust your graphics, volume, calibrate your controller, do your custom settings here so you can change your rates it's not uh, advanced like beta flight or the other ones and your physics camera options are in there as well this is a pretty basic uh, calibration screen for your transmitter
as you can see, there's there's uh, nothing really cinematic about these uh, levels. It's pretty basic. Your obligatory arcade. Oh, it lacks beauty, but it's fully functional. Like I said before, it's where I cut my teeth on flying. If you're looking to learn you know, muscle memory and uh, you know, your response, hand eye coordination is perfect. This little playground here does have a few gaps. So, although uh, this area right here is really small, you can have a lot of fun with it. And uh, you know, if you fly the races there, you can go through the trails. Now, I don't know how this version compares to the more recent ones released on Steam. I uh, had this software for several years now. I'm sure they've made some sort of updates to it in years since it was released. What they are, I can't tell you. But uh, regardless, it's still a relevant simulator. And there's still uh, lots of options to have fun in this. The next one, Drone Works, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. I heard about this one in a Reddit thread about some Korean students that created this one. I really think they missed the mark so far on this one. It has huge potential to be a FPV simulator, but right now it flies more like a video game. And I can tell that that's kind of what they intended. But the potential is definitely there. Okay, as you can see, you got a workbench here where you can customize your drone. You got lots of options from changing your frame, motors, props, batteries, flight controller, speed controller, antenna, and camera. The, uh, the downside to this, though, however, is that it's almost like a video game format. You earn coins when you race, and you can buy your components. The realism, I couldn't tell you. Here's your options for video. A standard... Uh, controller configuration. This one's got uh, recognizable rate settings. Several different levels here to fly. And as you can see, it uh, looks and feels a lot like a video game. There's not really much you can do outside of these gates here. It is cinematic, I do like that. However, the uh, the world to fly in is not very uh, little strict, uh, highly structured. This scenery here uh, is a little bit more fun, a little bit more to do in it. However, um, the flyability in here is a little bit lacking. It's uh, can't really control your quad here the way you should be able to in a simulator. It's, like I said, it uh, really feels like a video game and not a flight simulator. And there is a lot of potential here. I really hope they keep working at this one because I'd love to fly this as a simulator. The next one I'm going to show you is FPV Air 2. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one, but I will say that the user interface is pretty confusing on this one. The color schemes are horrible. However, it is flyable. Again, you can change all your flight characteristics that you want. It is aimed more towards racing than freestyle flight, and there's nothing cinematic about it. But if you're looking for a cheap simulator, it's relevant. As you can see here, user interface looks like it was designed for a video game in the 90s. First menu option here is your, uh, your controller input configuration. Uh, it's just a mess. It's really busy. A lot of stuff going on the screen here. Several pages of uh, button configurations. So depending on how you have your controller set up, it's going to show tons of buttons. And obviously a beta flight inspired configuration screen. Nothing really works in there other than your rate changes. And under your game settings, you can change your screen size, camera angles, a few different graphics options. I like the other simulators. You've got control over your uh, physics settings, and your drag, your gravity. This one has a bunch of settings to adjust. There are a bunch of tracks in here, but uh, other than uh, getting the additional content that you can purchase, uh, I would say that they're pretty to pretty basic sceneries, just a lot of different tracks in them. Nothing cinematic, nothing beautiful, but very relevant. You're going to be able to learn how to fly in this. The next simulator we're going through is FPV Freerider Recharged. So they've taken Freerider and they've kind of given a little bit of an upgrade. Your settings and everything are all the same. However, uh, the graphics are a lot better. The scenery is a lot better. Plus they've added additional content that you can download for an additional charge. So I've gone ahead and bought some of that so that I can show you guys. Um, I really like it. It's fun. It's a lot more fun to play than the original. Have a look. So this is basically the same setup as uh, the original Free Rider. A little bit of changes to the way the screen looks on the left hand side where your graphics options are. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Your settings and everything are identical. Calibration the same. A handy little button here is to set your throttle zero at the center in case you have a uh, transmitter that spring loaded to the center. It also helps if you want to fly in 3D mode in this simulator, which it does allow. So you got a bit more presets on uh, this one here. Other than that, pretty much the same settings that the uh, original free rider has and there's a few um, levels in this one as well these ones are a bit more cinematic a bit more going on in these levels which is good the graphics are better I like that as you can see here in the, uh, the forest scenery and, uh, cool little factory bando to fly in. I really enjoy this level actually. It's really tiny, but uh, there's a lot of gaps to hit. It's really challenging too. This simulator isn't as forgiving as the other ones out there for, for flying. So it's uh, 
that is a good way to own your skill. Uh, there's also some downloadable content, which I that was a few dollars. I figured why not? As I seen uh, some photos of a cool bando scene on this one, actually a couple of them. I haven't really checked out all the other scenes here, but this one here, I absolutely love flying, and it's a lot of fun. You got drops, you got gaps, you got uh, tight proximity gaps to hit. In this little building here alone, I could fly. I could fly for hours. In fact, I have flown for hours in here. It's just fun to fly. Not a lot other than it in the scenery. That's what I like about this uh, this downloadable content here. Is uh, in this just one level alone, you've got you got drops, which not a lot of simulators out there have. Got some gaps. Anyway, some have no gaps to go through. Just trees, grass. That's a that's a great level. I enjoy it. You probably will too. If you're gonna try uh, free rider recharge there, I highly suggest going for the extra content. You'll definitely get your money's worth. I don't get bored of this level. Here's another drop in this uh, scenery here. Which is great. Like I said, uh, if there's one thing that simulators are lacking, it's drops. And you're lucky to just find one. And in this one, we've got one. In that other level, we've got one. I do love these uh, sceneries where you can fly around. You know, you're not uh, in some tight spot. Or as soon as you fly outside the perimeter, the quad drops. I mean, this one has plenty of that. Um, but, like I said, this level here doesn't. And again, your obligatory arcade. No offense to anybody, but I don't have a whole lot of fascination for parkades. Maybe it's because I've had a truck stuck in one before. I failed to heed caution to the height clearance. I got lodged in. Maybe that's why I dislike them so much. The next simulator on my list is Liftoff. Absolutely love this one, and if you've been flying for any time, you're already aware of it. One of my personal favorites, and I've probably put more flight hours on this simulator than I have any other. And here it is. Liftoff. So as you can see, at quick access to your options, a lot of um, graphics quality choices to make, audio choices. Got to go through a few menus to set up your controller. Not that big of an issue. And some of the sims out there don't allow you to, but uh, this is one of the ones um, that do allow you to. You can configure some of your switches for resetting your quad after uh, a crash or resetting after a race or just hitting their reset button if you don't like how your lines go and you want to start over. You got uh, 
quite a selection of um, aircraft here. A lot to choose from. Quite a bit to choose from. Whole bunch. A lot. There's quite a bit to go through if you want to. I don't know how you choose. I guess you just got to kind of go by what you like. What you think looks good. Not that it'll make a difference in the simulator. But, uh, I personally like to customize mine anyhow um, to match the uh, specifications of quads that I'm going to fly. So as you can uh, see here, you can go to my fleet there and this one here of matched a few of my uh, quads that I own and fly. And from uh, within my fleet, you can customize your own aircraft. So you can match something that you have uh, already. If you want to use that. And here you go. From here you can select different frames all the frames that you uh, seen in that uh, drone selection area a whole bunch of different batteries your motors props and an amazing selection of motors to choose from And likewise, a whole bunch of different propellers to choose from. The system does limit you on some of the motors to what kind of props you can throw on the motor. As you can see, some are grayed out. Now, there are some motors in there that take five inch props, but it is limiting you to four inches, which I didn't like about that because I do have uh, real life configurations that I wanted to match up and it prevented me from doing that. Um, I mean, you can make changes so you uh, find similar thrust characteristics from other motors and you can adjust the weights as you see fit to, uh, to fine tune it and it does a good job. Um, whether they're one of those specific motors listed, I think as far as the simulation goes, doesn't really matter as long as you got the same amount of thrust for the same amount of weight, the thrust to weight ratio, and uh, with your physics dialed in, I should fly properly. Now from your uh, in-game menu options, you can see you can change ga gameplay options, graphics, audio, You also uh, can make changes to your flight controller settings. And a familiar Beta Flight inspired menu system, which is excellent. You can change your uh, drones and levels from right here in the menu system, which is great. You don't have to go back to the main menu and start over again. You just drop them down, select which one you want, and give her. Now here's the bando scene. Now this level is a lot of fun. You've got uh, a lot of gaps to hit, you got a lot going on, a lot of tight proxy areas. It's a very expansive scene here and uh, there's a lot to do in it. You're never going to get bored on this one. 
This is one of those levels where you can just fly and fly. And here's another level here that uh, I enjoy. That's the first level of liftoff that uh, I've ever flown. It wasn't until uh, a couple weeks ago that I actually flew outside of the fence and realized I can fly into that barn. That was fun. It's not the first time that's happened where you've been flying a level for hours and hours and you realize, oh, hey, there's more to this level. I was uh, pleasantly surprised because there's a couple nice gaps in that barn that I like to hit. And the Hanover level. This is fun. There's a lot to do in this level too. It's huge. And don't get me wrong, you run out of space eventually. Um, but there's a lot to do here. You've got uh, trees you can fly through, do some slaloming. You got some canopies you can power loop under. You got some cool structures you can play on. You've got some some buildings that you can uh, you can dive down. A lot to do in this level. Definitely one of my favorites. That's probably like a number two level that I like to fly. And it's got this cool little area where you can practice backwards flying. And that's something that's lacking in simulators is there's really no cool place to practice uh, your backwards flying. You know, uh, I, there's plenty of areas where you can fly and smack things every second, but uh, that makes it a little bit difficult to learn. And here's another good level. Love this one. The, uh, the golf course, the greens, I think they call this one. Spent most of my time starting out just flying through that gazebo there. Just because it's right there when you start. Who's not going to go for it? Some really good greenery to play with. Drop it in under the canopies. Boom. Another one of those levels where you can just fly it for hours and hours. And this one's a little fun. It's got some conveyors in here. Again, not a lot to do in it, but if you like whipping around conveyors and equipment, there's a couple pieces. All right, the next on our list is Real Drone Simulator. This one's brand new and it's still in the pre-release phase, so you can download that and play it. You will find right off the bat that the user interface sucks. Other than that, I see lots of potential on this one. Give her a try. Okay, here we go with Real Drone Simulator. Uh, user interface is a little confusing. It almost looks like you're uh, controlling a, an old DVD player. It's not very user friendly at all. Uh, your workbench is uh, enjoyable here. You got some uh, bunch of different quads to choose from. Another beta flight uh, kind of inspired screen here. Wasn't able to figure out how to set any auxiliary channels for reset or anything, so I don't believe that you can. Uh, and keep in mind that this simulator is still a work in progress. It's an early release. 
and it's free to fly right now. Your standard settings for graphics, audio. Here you can select from several branded drones. Yeah, uh, guys doing real drone simulator have partnered up with a bunch of uh, companies like Buddy RC, Drone Hungary, Emacs, Feral Quads, Runcam, GoFly, Gemfan, Tattoo, amongst others. So uh, you're going to see some branding in here. Not really unlike uh, any of the other simulators. Or we see a lot of that uh, partnership, that co-branding. I guess that's, I enjoy that, I think. I think everybody does. Really don't get what... Uh, so the options you can turn off in there. I think it's just for aesthetics. It's uh, obviously a sponsored, possibly drone, so they want it to, uh, to look as real as possible. One thing I really like about this is in-game menu allows you to adjust your receiver settings. And I would have to say that's probably the first simulator off the top of my head that I can think that does that. Every other one, you've got to stop, go back to main menus, and adjust that. That just blows my mind. I love it. And how many times have you had to mess with your uh, receiver settings, right? I have. Anytime I'm installing a new one, sometimes channels get inverted. I've got different... Uh, adapters to control my receivers so that I can fly everything with my FlySky transmitter wirelessly so I don't have to be plugged in. Well, cinematics on these uh, these levels are great. It flies pretty well too and you know, obviously you can adjust your settings to fine-tune it the way you want. Yeah, it's still doesn't feel quite right. Again, it's a uh, it's a work in progress, and I haven't spent a uh, a whole amount of time trying to adjust it and tweak it to where I want it. But uh, it's it's definitely flyable and enjoyable. There's really a lot of potential in this simulator here. I think it's uh, I think it's going to be a good one once the uh, they get everything figured out. I'm going to enjoy it. So far not a lot of levels, but as you can see, um, they're really making their levels uh, stand out. There's a lot going on in these levels here. There's a lot of playground area to enjoy. And a few little things to check out. Drone Racing League Simulator, DRL Sim. Next one on the list is another personal favorite of mine, and if you guys are into simming, you are also finding it a favorite because it is an excellent simulator to fly, and for me, it's probably the one I have the most fun playing. You'll have to forgive me a moment here, because we're gonna have a bit of splash screen love here. I don't know when you guys all grew up, but uh, if you've ever seen the show Airwolf, I think this uh, music here is going to remind you of that. I love it. Alright, let's take a look here. Get your standard controller settings. This one as well. Um, you can set up 
your buttons for uh, resets and uh, restart of your races, which is great. There's a few of them that still have to uh, you still have to hit a button on your keyboard to do that. It's kind of a pain. Your RC rate settings here. Got their own kind of stylized menu, but uh, you see the word Beta Flight there. It's obviously inspired by their settings, which is great. And here you can adjust your volumes, your camera tilt, FOVs, and your your standard uh, settings for these simulators. And your graphic settings. This one here, like a few of the others, have an excellent customization ability. So you can completely customize your drones to meet your, uh, your existing setups. And if you don't, uh, if you're just getting into it, obviously you can choose from any number of these uh, they offer. So there's a few uh, large sceneries here. As well, there is a whole bunch of their uh, multi GP uh, courses based on real events. And then a whole bunch of other um, sceneries are smaller more for uh, racing I don't typically fly those ones I usually fly the uh, large ones uh, out of service and gates of hell in particular for those ones drone parks new one I'm not going to show you that there's not much uh, going on with that one Right from here, you can select your drone, select what mode you're going to fly in, your camera tilt. Those can all be adjusted from the, uh, the in-flight menus. As you can see, uh, this is just one little one little bite of this uh, this level here. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, there's a cityscape in the background. And guess what? You can fly over there. Oh, you see that factory there? You can fly inside it. Those uh those smokestacks up top too, you can uh you can you can dive those gaps up there. It's never ended good for me. I can usually drop in, but I've never been able to get out. There's a couple tunnels here you can fly. If you get to the end, there's a cool little challenging connector to, uh, to the downtown core through the subway. Yeah, these little bando barns here you can fly through this is, again this is another scenery there um, that you can fly for hours and never get bored always gonna find uh, something new never actually gone up in those hills there to fly yet now that I think about it in the background you can see a bridge too uh, you can fly on that can't go much farther than that though but This is probably the, the nicest cityscape I've flown. 
um, in any of the simulators. Got some green space to fly. Got some trees to slalom. And uh, on here. This scenery here, I love this one too. Another giant one. We're flying through a blimp here. That's crazy. I love it. And some Bando inspired uh, options here to fly in this uh, airport on this little uh, little community you can fly through in the outskirts. Some cool gaps to hit. Closest thing to a uh, parkade you can see that we just flew by. I'm sure there's a parkade level in uh, in DRL somewhere. I haven't gone through everything. There's so much in uh, these two levels I showed you anyhow that you don't really need to fly anywhere else. I like playing over here. Do some alley-oops. I don't know why, but I just love doing that. Up and overs. And here's the, I think this level is Ellie Apocalypse. It's kind of a fun little one. It's a small track, small course that I like to freestyle in. I don't do it too often because there's not much going on here, but if you like some tight proximity flying here, this is uh this is really really good stick time. I have fun with it. The next one on our list, Eria Drone, is another one that's new to the scene. This one also doesn't quite make the mark, though there's a lot of potential in this one, and I really love the whoops in it. Has a nice cinematic style to it. The flying characteristics need a little bit of work, but it's still completely flyable. Not quite there yet. I'm hoping that they're still gonna work on this one because they have a lot they can do with this, and I think it would be a really good simulator once it's polished up. So I did have some issues running this one on uh, one of my older systems that I've been able to fly um, every other sim. Sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't. On the newer systems that I'm using it on, works fine. So you got your standard uh, control settings, video and graphics, audio settings. Nothing unlike any other simulator out there. This one's got a bunch of different uh, tracks to play. Now keep in mind this is uh, again early access. It's been released. They charge for it. But it's apparently a work in progress. So I hope they put a lot of work into this one because this is another one with a lot of potential. Graphics are very cinematic on this. I love it. It's uh, it's a treat flying here. Obviously, I'm hitting things that should be causing me to crash. It's not really registering it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because uh, I know there's a lot of simulators out there that cause you to crash when you haven't really hit anything. So you got some of your. Uh, physics settings. Just like a couple different quads in here. A little Cinewhoop here. This is fun to fly. I enjoy this. Flies completely different obviously than uh, the other aircraft. 
the other bird. Drone. Ah, oh, look at this. The cinematics are just great. Waterworks. This uh, scenery here has got a nice size to it. It's not a tight little playground where you can't explore, and I love exploring, especially in the winter time. Nice open space to do some backwards flying in. And the school scenery. This one's pretty cool. I enjoy it. It's uh, a good level to, to practice your throttle control and speed control on. Obviously tight proxy is, uh, is a skill that I think everybody should Play with, work with. I'm used to flying in large open spaces. A little bit of proximity, but not much. So I think uh, I think this is good skill building here. Now the graphics outside are just cartoonish. I hope they can put some good texture on there. Maybe put some more stuff to play with. Another good scenery to practice your uh, throttle control indoors here. This is almost like a uh, a parking garage, but don't worry, this one does have a parking garage level. What uh, flight simulator would be complete without the obligatory parkade? I don't think I've found one that doesn't. Maybe FPV Air 2 doesn't. That's probably the only one. And again, it might. I just haven't noticed it yet. Ah. Now this level here, this is... Another level that looks like it came out of the 1990s. This would have been impressive when the... Uh, the first G-Force, uh, the GE-256, I think, came out. Uh, the old Voodoo 3 3D effects. By today's standards, these graphics are a little bit horrible, but that's not really the point of a flight simulator, I guess. Ah, yes, here is your parkade. I mean, the parkades do uh, help you with throttle control, and that's a big part of flying is learning how much or how little throttle to give it to maintain your altitude. And uh, in tight quarters like this, I think that'll do the trick. Well, the flying in the simulator is pretty, pretty decent. I mean, it doesn't feel horrible. There's worse ones out there. And again, nothing that you can't, you know, adjust yourself. Which leads me to this uh, scenery here, the cityscape. Um, it was just horrible. I had to adjust the field of view just to make it feel and look and fly properly. Um, to make it feel somewhat realistic. That was my biggest complaint, I think, about this simulator. Uh, hey, granted, once I changed that, uh, flow flew great. Not a lot to do in this level. I would like um, more interaction, really. All right, our last in our list of FPV simulators has as much popularity as liftoff and DRL. This one's called Velocidrone, and again, if you've been flying for any amount of time, you know which one I'm talking about. Go have a look.
So this uh, menu here is a little bit less busy than some of the others. Your standard controller configuration does take a second to load. Here you can bind your auxiliary channels to a whole bunch of different options. Restart, camera angle changes, FOV, take screenshots, reset. And your main settings here is where you can set some of your volumes, sounds few options there then your screen settings obviously your, your graphics adjustments there and your quad settings here so you can change your FOV angles so your flight controller option and your quad selection in this simulator is different from all the others in that it seems that they're pretty much all sharing the same specs other than prop size so it's up to you to adjust your gravity and drag settings to put it into the quad that has a familiar feel for you or that feels uh, real there's tons of tracks in here uh, and quite a bit of sceneries as well. Make sure you check out the dynamic weather because there's some really interesting and fun courses and, and sceneries in there to play around with. And you can set favorites on your own uh, ones that you like to fly just because there's so many to choose from. As you can see, there's, there's a, a whole bunch amount of sceneries to choose from. And then with the, within each uh, scenery, you've got all your different tracks. So you're getting lots, of, lots and lots of places to fly in here. A lot of them are boring and a lot of them are a lot of fun i think this is my uh my favorite scenery here i have a lot of fun flying in this castle there's a few gaps some drops to do not a big one but it's enough to keep me entertained well, I own my FPV piloting skills. There's a lot of cool uh, lines to do in here. Some of them obviously were pre-designed by whoever designed this one course. And a lot you can figure out on your own. The cool thing about this this is music streaming right from the uh, user interface. <laughs> I love this. You just pick a streaming uh, channel, pop it in, and you can play it right from here. It is fun. Only thing I dislike really about this uh, particular simulator is changing your uh, camera angle and field of view um, you got to go back to the main menu to do that obviously it's not a big deal because once you have it set it's set there's another cool uh, bando track I like the lines on this one you have a lot of fun in it Oh, the Lost Drone wants it. You know, it's first installed, everything does feel floaty. Uh, not very realistic. So keep that in mind that you're going to have to adjust it right off the bat. A lot of the other simulators 
kind of feel there already without having to adjust things too drastically. Not this one. Not this one at all. And this is a this is a cool scenery right here. Like dropping in through those cranes here. Bunch of big gaps, you got small gaps, you got a lot of stuff to fly around, things to orbit. This is, uh, I think, uh, one of my top three sceneries in all the simulators. It's this one right here. I never get bored with this one. You got some bando in it, you got you know, some large structures to play with. It has a pretty cool background as well. Lots to do. Cinematic. I mean, the graphics aren't great, but uh, they're better than a lot of them out there. Some of it still feels a little cartoonish. So, especially this this track right here. But, uh, you can load with some cool playground features to whip around in. All right, for those of you that stuck with me through this, thank you. Hey, if you think I'm out to lunch on any of this, make sure you leave your comments down below. I'd also love to hear what your guys' favorite and most relevant flight simulators are. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I got a whole bunch of new content lined up and you don't want to miss out. Thanks for watching everybody. This was a pleasure putting this list together and it took up a lot of my time over the Christmas. I'm happy to share it with you. I hope you enjoyed it. 